Hi guys and welcome to the brand new Reykjavik review. If you're here from the other channel then thank you so much for coming over to this one. Remember to subscribe so that you can see heaps more foreign series and movie reviews. If you're completely new here then I pretty much just summed up what this channel is. It's reviews of series and films that are not in English such as this one. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in then I really appreciate it if you also stick around and subscribe. Let's get into it. Sami Blood came out a few years ago and screened at various film festivals, especially Nordic ones obviously, but I missed it at that time and since then it's proven very difficult to get a hold of, especially here in Australia. In the English speaking world, this film is pretty obscure, because although it is technically Swedish, it's primarily about the indigenous inhabitants of northern Sweden, a people known as the Sami. It's not, as you might imagine, a hit piece about the treatment of Sami people by Swedes, although it can appear that way from just a couple of scenes. It's really about a single character, Ella Maya, and her struggle to come to terms with the hurt that she suffered as a result of being Sami, whilst not being able to completely deny that she is Sami. It also paints a vivid picture of how the dominant culture in a country sometimes demands that a minority conform to that culture, whilst not ever fully allowing that minority to join them. This film is not really about events, who and where and what etc. Or you might say that its themes are deep, but its plot is sparse. So it's important that I don't really say much about the plot, because it's so minimalist that I wouldn't need to say much to kind of give it away. While doing my research for this review, I discovered that the director actually made a 15 minute version of this film the year before she was able to make it a feature, and that that 15 minute film is actually present in this film. That is, most of the scenes were not in fact re-shot. So the fact that the film had previously been the same film in about 15 minutes should give you an idea of the amount of quote unquote action seen in Sami Blood. At times I do think the film suffers for it. I love the end, and on second viewing I really liked the first half as well. It's the time from about halfway through to very nearly the end that seems to drag even in comparison to a film that's deliberately slow paced. If you don't like your films slow paced, for example if Never Let Me Go is a film that bored you to tears, then Sami Blood will bore you beyond tears and possibly to your grave. But that's about as much as I have for criticisms. Everything else about this film is pretty freaking amazing, especially considering that it was the director's feature debut. The camera is excellently used. When people think of cinematography, they often think it means making every shot as beautiful as possible. But that's only really if you're trying to portray beauty. The camera in Sami Blood is used to portray loneliness, doubt, fear, jealousy, and combinations thereof. It's the same story with the music. Though extremely minimalist, it's almost scary as it accompanies some very emotional acting. Which brings me to the casting. And this may be THE crowning achievement of this film. All the actors do a great job, from the Sami elders who are only in one scene, to the older version of Ella Maya, played by a woman of 73 years and almost no previous acting experience. But the standout casting and performances were from sisters Lina Cecilia Spadok and Mia Erika Spadok, Please excuse any poor pronunciation because even though I do speak Swedish, I do not speak a word of Sami. They play sisters in the film of course, which is sort of inevitable since at times they look so alike it's hard to tell them apart, but the relationship they have to convey is complex, shifting, and extremely important to the emotional impact of the film. I don't know whether neither, one, or both of them ever want to pursue acting as a career, but without a doubt they both could. 
In my opinion, the film needed to explore both girls and their relationship a little bit more deeply in order to have the effect that I feel it could have, and this might have been in place of some of the scenes in Uppsala, which are those that I felt dragged a little bit. How I feel about Sami Blood is that the director was able to convey her vision beautifully and with a clarity that some 10-time feature directors would do well to emulate, but I'm not sure that the script has enough crisis or conflict to keep us as interested as we had all hoped to be during a film. In my view at least, the script would benefit from just a tiny bit more intrigue in the plot, but I can totally respect the brave decision to keep the plot minimal and emotionally driven. If you're not interested in slow, drawn-out films that you have to give some time to sink in, then I'd advise you skip this one. But if you're interested in Nordic countries, Sami people, or Swedish modern history, then check out Sami Blood. <laughs> Guys, if you like this, as I said at the beginning, this channel is new, but I do already have about 25 foreign series and movie reviews that I will be sending over to this channel. So there's already a bunch of material ready to go for you guys, so make sure you subscribe and don't miss it as it comes over. But if you're interested in how to learn a language for real so that you can actually speak it, then do head over to my other channel, which has about 20 videos about language learning, language app reviews, progress updates, and all the rest of it. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching this review of Sami Blood. Let me know if you've seen it and what you thought of it. I'll look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you next time.